ready, my friend? Fuck it. Alrighty, folks. Hello, everyone. This is Mike Check 95 along with my cohort, Tim and Nakari, for this godforsaken series now. I can actually say that now, which I haven't said it yet. It, it didn't become godforsaken until this movie. I mean, Christ's sake, I fell asleep. Uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> what movie, you might ask? Terminator freaking Genesis. It is the continuation of the Terminator series. We have one more after this one, and then we're done. Well, we have to do the ranking, but that's about it. Yeah, if you want to do anything Genesis, buy a Sega Genesis. So, yes, this is Terminator Genesis. Um, yada, yada, yada. Uh, Kyle Reese gets sent back to 1984 to protect Sha Sean. Sarah Connor from a Terminator assassin, but a series of unexpected events alters the timeline. So that's basically the plot of the film. I am so confused because I called Sarah Sean. Um, ratings. Uh, oh, we're doing ratings now? I'm doing the... Oh, okay. The numbers, I should say. I apologize. Again, this film fried my brain like it did the first time I watched it, which was when it first came out in theaters. This this is our second time watching this film, by the way. I have to kill it. <laughs> Critics rated this film a 2.7 out of, out of 10. And audiences rate this film a uh, 5.2. Which, if you were to compare this to Salvation, critics enjoyed uh, Salvation more than this film. But audiences liked this film more than Salvation. So critics liked Salvation, audiences liked Genesis. The budget of this film was an estimation, but I wrote the biggest number, $158 million. I feel like this film should have been worth more money for the amount of shit that's in this film. Eh, you did say they kind of skimped on some of the effects. Yeah, and they box office back $440.6 million. Maybe Arnie was cheaper during this because this is kind of after a stint as governor, so maybe he wasn't getting paid as much. Before this film even opened, Paramount Greenland had two sequels. Mm-hmm. I, rem I remember that. See, a lot of producing companies make this mistake. And sometimes it works. But most cases it doesn't. Just like Genesis. J.K. Simmons improvised many of his lines, which makes sense because it's J.K. Simmons. J.K. Simmons is awesome. And this, this fun fact here, I am so glad that he was not in this film. As much as I would want, as much as I would say that this actor would have made this role more entertaining and whatnot, but I could not see him as a villain. But I'm so glad he's not in this, this, this film that's confusing as fuck. You know who the first choice for John Connor was in this movie? The first choice for John Connor in this film was Tom Hardy. Motherfucker! Bros. Hans Zimmer was involved in the score, and the soundtrack was pretty good. I will say that much. So far, every Terminator film that I have seen, the soundtrack has been really good. Pro, J.K. Simmons' existence in this movie. Yes, that's another pro that I had later on in the movie. Uh, the recreation scenes, I, I, I said they were average, but I actually did enjoy a lot of the recreation scenes, scenes even if some of them weren't like carbon copies. Like the chase scene with the, the with the back doors open and the cop oh, car. Oh, so, you, so you're not talking about the scene like where they actually recreated yeah. some of the stuff. Yeah, like I'm talking there. I'm talking about those and the other ones where they had that where you could tell it was kind of a recreation, but they had put their own spin to it. I would say what they did for him and John Connor and the chase scene, they weren't like it. It wasn't bad. They, like it, it was. It, I wasn't like saying, "Oh my God, why are they doing this? This is horrible." It wasn't that. I wrote down Grandpa Terminator, but I'm probably, I guess at this point it's pretty much Dadinator. I liked Arnold in this film a lot. It could have been both. In the first part of the movie in 84, he's Dadinator. I, then, he's, then he's Lonely Grandpa for like two minutes. I enjoyed Arnold in this film. He was entertaining. He was funny. He was great. Oh, Arnold. And everything. Arnold brought his comedic A-game in this. Oh, God. And the fact that like they let him, like, since... Since he's a smart computer AI and AIs can eventually learn stuff because they have a learning processor in this series, he eventually started getting emotions. And if he didn't really show them that much, you could sense it. And I actually enjoyed that because that also ties into Marcus Wright. Yeah, subtle Terminator. The CGI, it took me a while to actually make a decision on this, but I decided to put the CGI as a pro because 
There were some bits that looked very iffy. There was the one face scene that you missed where he came busting through the, the, the uh, double glass like window and the cop interrogation scene. Oh, yeah, that's when I was like... I think I was looking for my vape. Yeah. Um, like the, the CGI face of Arnold there was actually pretty bad, but overall the CGI actually looked really good. I mean, they, it just felt like it's some scenes they kind of like slacked off. I think this film had reshoots too, which would explain why some of the stuff looked kind of crappy. Arnold and Emily's dialogue was really great throughout this entire film. Like they actually blended together really well. I think this is the first time they ever worked on the project together. Yeah, and you, and you went like, all like more than like three because times. Their, because their chemistry was so great and everything. It literally looked like a father-daughter kind of situation. And she looked like she was fucking 19 the entire movie. Um, the action scenes, for as much as this film gives me headaches for, the action scenes in this film were top fucking notch. Just the amount of explosions and fighting and everything and like the creativity they did, especially with the liquid terminator in the beginning where he cut his arm off, picked it up and threw it like a spear. That was cool. Like, like a lot of like the fighting and then like that's, I feel like that's where they put most of the effort in was in the action scenes because there's a lot of interesting things on like, they've never actually done this before. They haven't done that before. I mean, okay, uh, they, that, I mean, they were, I mean, action was good and whatnot. <laughs> But going back to T2, I like the fact that they balanced it with freaking the philosophy of the movie itself. There is, yes. For me, there is such a thing as too much action. Yes. And this film does have too much action, but that's why I say the action makes up for the confusing plot line. Going back to the action, never before seen and never again, I feel like we'll see the Torp and the, 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 tor the, tor the Torpede, the, the Torp and Dadinator. I thought too hard on that one. The Terma Missile. The Terma Missile. Those are all my pros. Do you have any, anything good to say about the film before I go to the cons? The music was good. Okay. Nap time. <laughs> Your nap? <laughs> I don't even know how long I was out. I think it was only like about a couple minutes. Yeah. I mean, you said you saw her get stabbed. Yeah. And but, then you missed the weird phase in, phase out, the phasing through her scene. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cons. Number one reason why this film is awful, awfully bad is PG-13. Yeah, that just... Can we just go back to, like, before, uh, when, um... God, who was the guy who was the Raiders of the Lost Ark guy? Uh, the director? Steven Spielberg. Yes. Yeah, can we go back before his, uh, PG rating with a little bit of hot sauce? Because I think that rating in itself has ruined all movies yeah, ever since. This film... For me, I didn't like the fact that it retconned to Salvation. I'm going to die on that hill that Salvation is a gym that everyone needs to like give a second chance. And also it retconned some other elements of the original trilogy. Preach. Again, they did some of that on purpose, but at the same time, it like, it... This is supposed to be a sequel, sequel, even though it's not a sequel or a reboot, but it's supposed to be a sequel to Terminator 2. But if you were to tie in all the events to Terminator 2, to Terminator Genesis, nothing makes sense. Yeah, we kind of talked about this, and the only thing that actually makes sense is multiverse theory. Yeah. This is where my head, which is low down the spring, literally goes... <laughs> I preached and bitched about throughout this entire movie. I did not like Jason Clark or Jai, Cor Jai Courtney in this movie at all. Right. Jai Courtney was... Boring like he was in A Good Day to Die Hard. And for Kyle Reese, he's too muscular. I mean, Michael Bean was cut back in the first film. Yeah. But he wasn't bulky like Courtney is. Again, if, if they would have said fuck it and made Kyle Reese Australian, I feel like they would have given him more free reign. Well, they fucked up everything else in the timeline, so why and not? Jason Clark. I'm going to tie this in with my other reason why I don't like Jason Clark in this film. My main problem with Jason Clark as John Connor is not like the first few minutes. He seemed a little boring in the first few minutes. But my biggest problem is when he gets hacked. He talks too much. He's a typical villain that just runs off of the mouth because he's like, oh, high and mighty, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. My world is perfect. Blah, 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 blah. The kind of villain you want to shoot in the face with a monologuing? Yes, that's, it, like, this, th that's, I hated that he monologued. Even Arnold said in the film, he talks too much. You caught me monologuing. And the fact that he was acting like Matt Smith and not himself. I, I, I still said that was intentional. 
Again, I want to say that they locked Jason Clark and Matt Smith in a padded cell and forced Jason Clark to act like Matt Smith. Or Matt Smith was wearing Jason Clark like a skin suit. Just confirmed. <laughs> Jason Clark might be actually dead. <laughs> obvious villain is obvious. You can tell who the fucking villain is in the first like ten minutes when they're doing the whole tel- the whole like time mm-hmm. travel thing. Because Matt Smith has the look of a villain. Yeah, that's one evil looking guy. Unless he's the doctor. I was also very confused by his role in the film. And I still am kind of confused. Like, he corrupts and hacks John Connor. And then it's like he is John Connor, so he's hacked John Connor. But at the same time, he's protecting himself. He's like, I am Skynet. No, you can't fucking throw that wrench in there and call it fucking good good boy, here's a bone. That's bullshit right there. It could have worked if they kind of made John Connor play second fiddle to Skynet. You know, kind of have both both of them in the future. Yes. Or in 20, not the future, but 2017. Yeah, in the 2017 timeline. But it didn't work because... Kind of have them, de- kind of have them defeat the, co- the uh, John Connor clone or cyborg or dusty guy. And the fact that there was an end credit scene, which I know I skipped, but it's like... Well, no. Basically what happens is... They're back in the future. We didn't skip it because we watched this on uh, Paramount Plus. And it skips and it, and it was just like, okay, credits are going. We're just going to go to the next movie, which was probably arguably, arguably worse. It was a Transformers movie. Yes. Uh, so basically, is it back in the future where it's back at the time place thingy? Or is it at the time place thingy that was destroyed? Are you talking about the beginning of the movie or the end of the, the movie? The end credit scene. Um, so I know it's at a time placement, time traveler I bullshit thing. I don't remember. But I know that digital Matt Smith comes back, and he's like... <laughs> yeah, and the question that will, and that is a question that will never be answered, of what the fuck was that about? Yeah, uh, other than sequel bait, and yeah, uh, I demand answers. I demand answers. Dude, I, they sequel baited this so hard. Okay, uh, I, I have comments... I would rather would have recasted Mac Smith as Hack John Connor. Yeah, but that still kind of freaking makes me kind of wonder because they because sh- they show like, jo- they show John Connor, but how would Matt Smith be Hack John Connor if you're actually having the actor play John Connor when that's not the actor playing John Connor? But Jason Hack John Hack John Connor can shape shift too. Okay, have him kind of go in between the forms. Yeah. That makes sense. I want to see more of Matt Smith because, like that, like I feel like that would have been better. Fun fact, uh, and you kind of noticed it too when I put it out. The '70s flashback at the lake is the same exact lake, I believe, because it had a lot of similarities as the lake in the Friday the Thirteenth remake. My last one, again, would probably will never be answered. Who sent the two T-800s? One to kill Sarah and one to protect her in the '70s. Obviously, the one who sent to kill Sarah in the 70s was Skynet. But who <coughs> sent the one to protect Sarah Connor? And who sent the uh, Asian T-1000 to 84? You didn't think about that, did you? I forgot about it. I knew he was in the movie, but I didn't think too hard on it. So Skynet had sent two t- T-800s to go kill her, while also sending a liquid terminator to kill John Connor and then there's the fourth one that fucking for all we know Jesus Christ sent that terminator to protect Sarah Connor <laughs> oh my god you will know my name is the lord i do, I, do you have any do you have do you have okay do you have any thoughts any discussion anything you would like to say about this film that i did not cover or say about this movie the the, the reins are yours just take over for like a few minutes while my brain rests. Let's talk about guns. Welcome to Logan's Arsenal. Thank you. Yeah, I know we skipped it on the last one, but I was like really tired. And I need a little bit of a white pill on this black pill of a movie. There's actually some anachronisms here that are actually kind of interesting. Oh, God. Uh, they use the Desert Eagle Mark... What is that? Seven? 
Yeah, yeah, seven. The Mark Seven was uh, not introduced until 1990. Then there's a uh, Glock 17. The Glock 17 is the most uh, common handgun in the United States. And, uh, I mean, there's conjecture that there's uh, more Glocks in the United States than people. Then in '84, uh, in the, like the handgun that uh, Sarah Connor uses that isn't a 50 caliber hand cannon is a nine uh, millimeter Browning High Power, designed by our Lord and Savior John Moses Browning. And then there's an M&P 226 E2, another CT, another 226, and they brought back the original pistol from uh, uh, the re the revolver that uh, Kai Reese picks up from the uh, police officer in '84, the Smith and Wesson Model 15. Okay, now we're into SMGs. Oh, there's a lot of guns in every Terminator movie. Do you, do you have any idea I, how many I skipped in the uh, freaking T2 review, or T3 review? I mean, there's a whole coffin full of them, so... Okay, got the MP5K, which is anachronistic because the uh, PBW version of the MP5K was not released until 1991. This is a cameo appearance as a Sterling Mark V sub... Uh, or Mark IV sub submachine gun which is the uh, outgrowth of the uh, Sted gun that the uh, British used in World War II. Uh, the Uzi, designed by Uzi O'Dall. And shotguns, of course, because Arnie's got to use a shotgun in every Terminator movie. I mean, yes. Uh, Model 1100. Of course, I think there's been one of these in, in some form in every Terminator movie. Mm -hmm. A Remington 870. And then there's an FN Tactical Benelli M3, Benelli M4 Super 90, please. And another one that I want, the Caltech KSG. Well, of course, there's an AKMS. Wild bigger in the shot. The piston driven uh, HK416, which everybody loves. And of course, you got your M4 because ever the, like they're prevalent. Mm -hmm. M16A2, Colt Car 15, which was actually the uh, precursor to the M4. Uh, another anachronism was kind of, but not really, uh, was the uh, Barrett M82A1 50 caliber, not sniper rifle, anti-material rifle, because it's used to shoot tanks. Oh, that big giant gun that Sarah's carrying in the movie. Yeah, the one that literally weighs like 30 pounds. The Terminator killer gun, pretty much. Yeah. Actually, you know, it is anachronistic because it was made in 1986. A Browning M2HB. And then we got the uh, FIM-92 uh, launcher, which is also known as the Stinger. Good old box standard RPG-7. M203A1, which is a 44... <laughs> Rant time. Here we go. Why can't movies get the distance that a uh, 40 millimeter grenade activates? Because they're shooting stuff like three or four feet in front of them, not going deaf, not having any form of hydrostatic shock from the pressure wave, and it's not the shrapnel that kills you, it's the pressure wave. I think, it's t I think it takes like, I want to say 10 yards for a 40 millimeter grenade to activate because it's got to spin a certain number of times before the... They just don't get it right. I mean... If you shoot some, if you shoot something like th three feet in front of you, the grenade's just either gonna clink off and land on the floor, and then you got a freaking very dangerous situation with an unexploded explosive device in front of you. But just don't kick it and let it roll down the road. <laughs> I, actually, I actually think there's a story of like uh, Al Qaeda soldier getting killed by a rolling grenade. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it would go through it or just clink off of it. So yeah, bad Hollywood. And then one of my favorites, a Carl Gustav M2 recordless rifle. It's an amazing weapon. It actually fires a uh, rocket at the speed of a bullet. Speaking of explodey things and 40 millimeter grenades, there's, a, there's also a Mark 19 grenade launcher. The Mark 19 is a belt-fed 40 millimeter grenade launcher. That's horrifying. And then there's a taser. Uh, and then some futuristic weapons that I'm not getting into because this has gone on long enough. I forgot to talk about the pacing of this movie. I didn't like the pacing. I feel like it couldn't decide if it wanted to be a long, drawn-out, thoughtful movie or just action, 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 action. It varied on how long each section of fast and slow was, and it just was like more hillier than the Rocky Mountains itself on the amount of like back and forth it went. So the pacing. Oh man, the fact that there's four Terminators. So you're saying it's got schizophrenic pacing? Yes, 
And four Terminators. My brain just it. Genesis hurt brain. Genesis make brain go boom. I don't reset. <laughs> <laughs> there was the scene you actually kind of you actually passed out during the scene. The part where uh, hacked John Connor stabs Sarah in the neck there with his little. I caught that. The, the thingy part. And then that, she, that, that's when I was going in and out. She dropped the detonator, and then Dadnator picked it up and was having his hand. He's getting ready to flip oh, the switch. Oh, I caught that. He's like, I cannot do it. Like he's getting ready to flip the switch, and she's like, Do it, do it. He's like, I cannot terminate John or, or Sarah Connor. And then here comes uh, Jai Courtney running around the corner, and like they do the weird fucking camera cut look, camera cut look scene, and they throw the detonator to. Kyle Reese, which that still doesn't make sense because why would the Terminator, who was programmed to protect Sarah Connor, who was in danger to ha from because of hat John Connor, throw the detonator to Kyle Reese, who was literally within arm's reach of the Terminator? Yeah, so the Terminator is still going against its direct orders because all of them are within arm's reach of each other, or the blast radius would still kill them. Yeah, like Kyle could have literally just reached over and went, boop. In other words, if Kyle flipped the switch, Sarah Connor still would have died. The Terminator would have still failed its mission. And all that. Uh, ratings, um... You go first. Before watching this film, because I've only seen this film once before now, I, based off memory, I would have said that this film was slightly better than Terminator 3 because I found Terminator 3 very boring. I th now? I think a boring Terminator film granted it would be a pain in the ass to get through. It's a little bit easier to get through than the amount of theoretical headaches I'm getting thinking about this. So this film is getting a 2. Point three. Uh, because one word. Confusion! I think for the fact that I got to see it at a drive-in theater for the short set I worked there, I would say, okay, it's pretty cool. But sitting here watching it in an enclosed room inside of my house actually make me realize that, oh, maybe it was the experience of the theater itself that made it not so bad. This movie is actually fucking garbage. <laughs> Shout out to Dave McRae. That movie was a fucking shit show. Oh. One out of ten. This movie retcons the entire series, and I feel like it also retcons itself. <laughs> How do you retcon yourself by the end of the film, you fucks? It checked itself before it recon retconned itself. Yeah, it literally retconned itself when they it literally when the movie ended because I feel like the movie itself knew that it was it was dead on arrival. But I like you know with hearsay and everything, they have some pretty interesting ideas for the sequels. They did, but I think just they shouldn't have even tried to make Skynet a person. And another thing, here we go. Why would hacked John Connor, aka uh, the Doctor, aka Matt Smith, um, would need the time traveler bullshit thingy? To bring in the eight get troops from the future when he's connected to pretty much everything that is like uh, fucking AKA Apple products and he can just hack everyone there and make his own army. Why would he make his own army but have that? I don't know. That doesn't that that was the one thing that didn't make any sense to me. I'm done with this movie. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I, I, oh my god, this might be going to be down as a mic check in depth destruction. Do it. Bet. This, this film has landed the in depth destruction rating. And it, I'm actually going to put it down. It's not horrifically bad like Long Getting or. Thanks, killing. Those films are on a okay. fucking different goddamn level. So this is an actual rating. I've never heard this before. But 
If I'm sitting here and trying to compare it to the last two fucking Resident Evil movies, which are goddamn atrocious, I'm talking about Retribution and Final Chapter, that actually hurts me. Because I like the Terminator series. Well, to be fair, I don't think anybody died in this movie. Or lost an arm. This is my Chick 95. Signing out. My this brain hurts. This is Logan Dakari, and next time in the Terminator series... We're gonna piss everyone off! We go to something better! I, 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 have, I have been propping this movie up every review. Again! I love this next movie. We're gonna go to something better and piss the entire internet off, because we love you. See you in Dark Fate. <laughs>